There are a number of boats that are commonly used for sailability. The Hansa 303 is one of these. Before the boats are launched, they need to be rigged. Do this on an open piece of lawn or beach or whatever open space is available to you. Unload the boat from the trolley using safe lifting procedures and face the front of the boat, the bow, into the wind. There are three poles or spars that must be attached to the boat. The foremast, from which the foresail or jib is flown, the mast, to which the mainsail attaches, and the boom. The mast is the biggest spar and is inserted into the tube in the centre of the boat. It drops down the hole into a socket below the deck. It is fixed by a wing nut that is tightened. The line leading out from the socket is the furling line. It is a continuous line with a knot in it. Bring the knot all the way round to the left hand side of the boat and all the way to the front and cleat it off. The furling line unwraps and rewraps the sail around the spar. In this case, the mast. This is called unfurling and furling the sail. The short line that prevents the sail from unfurling can be stowed away on the right side of the seat's backrest when sailing. The next spar to be attached is the boom. This will sit in the centre of the boat and attach to the mainsail. Unravel the lines, the main sheet, and make sure they are not twisted. The hook-like fitting on one end of the boom, the rollock, is then fitted against the mast below the sail. Lead the unfurled sail back along the boom. Bring the hoop that is attached to the end of the boom forward to meet the corner of the sail, the clue, and attach via a shackle. The line now attached to the clue of the sail is called the outhaul, and the other end of this line must now be pulled through to keep the sail along the boom. Pull it through and cleat it off. The main sheet can now be attached to the traveller. Make sure the twists are taken out of the lines before attaching. The traveller is the piece of line running across the stern of the boat. It is attached by the shackle that is attached to the main sheet. The main sheet runs along the boom. Pull the slack through and into the boat before threading the sheet through the lead and the cleat. Pull the slack through and then tie a stopper knot, usually a figure of eight. In preparation for fitting the final spar, the seat must be lifted to access the shock cord attached to the furling lines. This shock cord keeps the tension in the furling lines and must be slackened before the foremast can be fitted in place. Now that it is not under tension, the jib furling line can be pulled forward and looped. Place the foremast in the hole and bring the furling line up over the lip to sit neatly on the drum, making sure the spar is seated correctly. Test the furling line from inside the boat to ensure it is working and rotating the spar. Fasten the shock cord back in place and replace the seat. Cleat the furling line. The jib sheets can now be unwrapped from around the sail and the sail itself unwrapped from around the foremast. The sheets should be untangled and one led down either side of the boat. The end of the sheet is then led through its lead and cleat. Again a stopper knot is tied and the remaining slack pulled through. Repeat this on the other side of the boat with the other sheet. Before launching the boat, both sails must be refurled. Uncleat the outhaul and using the main sail furling line, pull the knot on the left side of the boat round to the right side of the boat, and in doing so, the sail will wrap around the mast. Recleat the furling line and the outhaul. Locate the jib furling line and pull with your left hand while holding the jib sheets under tension with your right. Remember to only pull on one side of the furling line at a time to prevent it coming off the drum the left side to furl and the right side to unfurl. Cleat the sheets and cleat the furling line. To fit the steering system, attach the metal rudder box. Remove the long pin and slot the rudder box into the brackets on the stern of the boat. 
Replace the pin through the bracket capturing the rudder box and fixing it in place. There should be full movement of the box. Attach the steering lines to the rudder box with the pin. Insert the joystick and test the movement of the rudder box. The rudder is best inserted once the boat is over or in the water. Weighing 25 kilos, care must be taken when manoeuvring and fitting the centreboard. The use of a Hansa sea crane is recommended. Once in place, the centreboard is fixed with a large aluminium rod that ensures that it does not rise up out of its casing.